Welcome back to Tammy Tackles Everything. I am so happy to have you all here with me. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who took the time to not only watch the video, but to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so, so much. I'm feeling all the love. I'm so excited and I can't wait to continue on this journey with you. I know I call the channel Tammy Tackles Everything. It's kind of like my trademark at this time because if you don't know, I'm a multi-potentialite, which means I've taken on quite a few different roles in my life and also gone after a few different careers. <laughs> and YouTube is one of those now. So yeah, Tammy Tackles Everything. It was a podcast and now it's a YouTube channel and so I am planning on keeping some podcast style uh, conversations, but any of these could have really been a podcast too. So that's the idea that it will not just be talking, but it will be tutorials, whether those are makeup tutorials or cooking tutorials, uh, like I said, conversations and the list goes on. We'll see, right? So many of you reached out to me and said, you know, thank you so much for even starting without knowing the ending. <laughs> without knowing where this is going, without having the clear vision. And I hope that that somehow encouraged you to do the same. You might not know uh, where it, anything is gonna end up, but if you can just take that first step, believe me, it will be so worth it. I took so long to get this started because I wanted everything to be perfect. And it honestly paralyzed me for so long. So I hope that that was just a little encouragement to kind of push you, to kind of just say, hey, Let's just start. We don't need to have a clear vision. We don't need to have all the direction in the world. I, I really trust and believe that life literally will leave us breadcrumbs so that we know what the next right step is. And this is my next right step. So let's get into it. Before we start with the actual update, I wanted to, first of all, talk about some of your comments, some of your questions. First of all, uh, shout out to all of the mummies to be who showed up on the channel and who left a comment. Bump bump. Uh, I always use a hashtag bump bump. <laughs> so happy that you're here with me and so happy that you too can share. Uh, for instance, you know, one mommy shared that the, the prenatal vitamin I use makes her completely sick. And I'd asked her to share what worked for her because, you know, what works for me might not work for you. So it's just a reminder that we're kind of on this journey together. It's a very unique but this is a space and a community where we can share. And so if you have anything to add to the conversation, please do so in the comment section. We'd all love to hear from you. Like I said, when you're pregnant, expecting, you want all the information you can get about any and everything. Um, I can imagine that's the same for if you're having, if you're expecting a girl, if you're expecting a boy, if you're expecting multiples, if this is your first, if it's your second, third, fourth, whatever it might be. So please feel free to share. This community and space is all about that. And that is what I want to foster. Which brings me to my next thing. A couple of you asked me about this being my fourth cesarean section. So yes, it is my fourth cesarean section. And the questions really were, is it safe? It's a very touchy topic because the truth is that Anytime you go under the knife, there's a risk. And with my first, we were not expecting to have a cesarean section. With my second, I was attempting a vaginal birth after cesarean, which is a VBAC. And with my third, we did a scheduled cesarean because I knew I wasn't going to try another VBAC. Now with this baby, we are going to be doing a cesarean, as I mentioned in my last video. That is a journey that is so unique to each person. We had multiple conversations and still having conversations with my doctor, uh, even before we got pregnant. And it is something that we have to approach differently, right? So this time around, things are a little different. The conversations are a little different. There are a lot more medical <laughs> um, things that I didn't expect, like uh, I'm gonna have to ha bank blood basically. Not me personally, but a couple members of my family are going to be donating blood just in case uh, I need it while in surgery. Pray to God I don't. Uh, but there are risks involved, just like there was a risk in all of the three before this. We just have to be mindful of that and we have to approach it in a way that, you know, anything could go wrong and praying that it doesn't. So I have been very blessed to have really great recoveries. 
really great surgeries and not really any complications whatsoever. So we're hoping that that will be the same. That's not the story for everybody. So I just want to put that out there, that this was a conversation ongoing between myself, Wayne, and our doctor, and it's not something that we take lightly. So the comment section was filled with all kinds of wonderful, first of all, great congratulations. So thank you for that. Um, lots of sharing, lots of questions. Something that I did want to share about was, um, if you watch the family vlog, you'll see where I had had a fetal heart Doppler and I wanted to share this with you. Um, I just spoke to a mommy recently who is very early on in her pregnancy and we were talking about how it can be so stressful when you are not sure in between visits of how things are going. And something I've always loved is a Doppler. It's not for everybody, uh, especially because you can't hear it till about 12 weeks anyway. <laughs> so it's a little tricky. And if for one day, God forbid, you're taking a little longer to find the heartbeat, it can be really stressful. So you kind of have to know your own personality and what works for you. My cousin introduced me to the Doppler. She's actually a nurse practitioner and she used one throughout her pregnancy and encouraged me to use as well. And it's really been a lovely thing to have, especially in between visits and before I could feel her kicking or before you can feel any baby kicking. And so it's really cool. But like I said, you have to know yourself, but I am gonna um, put this in the description below. I actually have an Amazon storefront, which I'll share in the description. I've had it for months now. And so maybe I'll make like a baby section for sure. I do have a new mom's must haves, <laughs> but maybe I need like a baby must haves. I'll, I'll double check it before this video goes out. So you guys can check it out. Full transparency, I earn a small commission off of every product sold from my Amazon storefront. So you can go and check it out. Oh, another product that I'm loving, which I did not love when I was pregnant with the boys. It was a smell, even though it doesn't have a funny smell to me now. Um, it really turned me off when I was pregnant with the boys is bio oil. Can you guys see that? Um, don't mind my nails. <laughs> it's a little pricey. I won't lie. Uh, but I've had this one for a little while now and I use it almost every day and it's still pretty full. What I would say about this and how it's different to other oils, because you can use other oils, you can use coconut oils, you can use cocoa butters. Both of those are bothering me now this time around. So those are what I used in my last pregnancy. Cocoa butter, not so much. I don't love the smell of it, but coconut oil, I definitely used a lot of. There are lots of like um, belly balms on the market that you can look at, but I decided to try this again because I remember uh, somebody saying it was really good. What I will say is that this keeps my tummy moisturized for a long time, which I wasn't expecting. And I was really surprised at that. It says to help improve the appearance of scars and stretch marks. For the record, I don't really have a lot of visible stretch marks. Like you can see them sometimes when I turn in the light around my belly button, but I did not really get any stretch marks on my tummy um, or on my side or back with any of the babies. Um, but like I said, just around the tummy, but I don't think that is to be credited to any cream, potion or lotion. I think that's genetics. Um, and I think that's just how it is. I have stretch marks on my hips and my bottom um, and my breasts, but for some reason, I just didn't get them on my belly. So yeah, but yes, I will link this also. So shall we get on with the recurring questions for this week? How far along am I this week? This week I'm 22 weeks, which means I'm closer to delivery than I am to conception, if that makes sense. So I'm closer to actually having the baby <laughs> than I was to making the baby. Wow. Which apparently was a lot of fun. <laughs> actually, I do remember. <gasps> I was on the two liquor, you know? Oh no. I think I gained a pound since last week. I will be showing you the belly bump soon so you guys can see the difference between last week and this week. And yeah, 22 weeks, can't believe it. Can't believe it, oh my God, like the time is flying. I'm gonna say that every week, be aware of this. So this week, the baby is the size of a papa. If you're in America, UK, Canada, or I don't know where else they call it, a papaya, that's what it is. Well, for us in the Caribbean, it's a papa. What do you call it in your country? I'm not even sure. Maybe you call it something else, but in Jamaica, we'll call it a papa. 
so i'm assuming everyone else calls it a papa bad assumption but the size of a papa let's talk about the baby's development for this week all right this one says that the baby could also be compared to the size of a bell pepper or a sweet pepper as we call it here okie doke so only 18 weeks to go that's the first thing and finally the baby weighs one pound can you imagine that your baby's grip vision and hearing are all getting stronger now by week 22 of pregnancy your little one has also achieved a big milestone breaking the one pound mark, which is so amazing. So it says we might be noticing more changes, including a protruding navel, which we should talk about, um, and possibly even slightly bigger feet, which we should also talk about. So though the baby's eyes are closed, your little one can perceive light and dark now. <gasps> you can test this by shining a flashlight on your tummy and see if your baby moves. I remember doing this with the other boys. <gasps> Ozzy's here. Oh boy. Wayne, yeah. Ozzy's here. I better make this fast. Uh, also, baby's ears are beginning to hear and process sounds from inside your body. Your breathing, your rumbling tummy, and your heartbeat. Here comes trouble. So I wanna go back to what we were saying about the navel and the foot. So I do have like a innie belly button or an outy belly button. I have like a flat belly button. And so every pregnancy, I don't really get like an outy. It just kind of, <laughs> it just kind of stays flat, which I'll show you when I show you my bump. But my feet, let's talk about the foot them. People are the pain of my life. Do you know that since having, okay, when I had Jackson, I wore a size eight. I could wear a seven and a half eight. But they are nine. <gasps> nine. Ooh. Can you imagine that? So I am so worried that with this one, it will go up a half size again that I don't even know. I, my friend Leanne said I must wear clothes to a shoe the whole time, but I just can't do it. So let's hope it just stay here because I can't bother buying a more shoe star. Another thing I want to address is that I'm having a lot of lower back pain this time around, this early. So it's on my right side and it's low and it's making me waddle. So I'm not normally a waddler, but Manali, it really kind of just tweaks every time I move. So stretching helps. So that's why I really have to get back into some yoga. But for now, I just do some forward folds, some deep breathing, and I'm hoping for the best. Are you having anything like that? That's That's been my real pain. I don't really have any heartburn, which is interesting. With all the boys, I had to be like downing Toms, but I don't with this baby. The most is every now and again, I'll eat a little too late and the food will rest right here, but no heartburn to, to really ride home about. So yeah, let me know what you're feeling this week, no matter where you are on your journey. And yeah, we can talk about it. This article, and uh, just so you know, I'm taking it from whattoexpect.com. Hi! Hi! <laughs> How was your day? <laughs> Oops! Oh no, mommy, spill her juice. Uh oh. Don't worry, mom. Don't worry. I picked it. It's okay, stay with me. We'll soon clean it up. Nice to see mom, you. I'm cleaning it. Oh, you're gonna clean it? Okay, mom. give me a kiss first. Mom. Okay, careful. Don't want you to slip. Don't want you to slip. Careful. <laughs> careful. You going to take that in the kitchen for mom? Oh, you going to? It's coconut water. Coconut water used to make me nauseous, but now it doesn't. Thank you. Uh, yes. Coconut juice. Coconut. You heard the spill, daddy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> I normally tell him it's coconut juice because anytime I would say water, he would not drink it because he would think he would be expecting water. Thanks, Daddy. You're welcome. I love coconut juice. Coconut water or coconut juice. Go ask Daddy for some. Watch yourself. Don't slip. Right. Yes. I don't remember what I was saying now. What was I saying? Okay, so oh, I was telling you that I get a lot of this information from whattoexpect.com and one of the things it brought up was coping with tummy touches. I feel like I don't have to deal with that so much now, especially with COVID, 
But I remember having to deal with that with the boys and I really didn't mind, tell you the truth. There were only a couple of people who I did not like touching my stomach, funnily enough, and it was often the people really close to me. Random. Um, but yeah, I don't really mind if people touch my tummy. I know some women are very particular and very funny about that. And I surprisingly wasn't. But no, it doesn't really happen. And I think it's because of everything COVID. We're not really touching each other anyway. Want to mention that I think my hair looks great. Um, I don't know if you know, but when you're pregnant, your hair doesn't shed as much, which is why it looks so thick and luscious. And I haven't really had any like breakouts or pregnancy acne. I know that was something that came up in the comments. I would always suggest to try something natural. Um, I know sea moss is really great for your skin. Uh, so maybe you could try that. And do you guys remember how I was telling you about the kefir and how I've been trying that out? Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments um, because it's something that was recommended to me as a probiotic. You know, it's, a, it's probably a better way to take a probiotic than just like popping a pill. So let me know if you have any experience with kefir and how you take it. I feel like it needs to be blended in a smoothie, to be honest. Movement. So this week was the first week that I would say now people outside can really feel her kick. So she kicks a lot once I've eaten or I've drank something. But this week, Atlas could feel her kick. And you know, it's special when the little ones can actually feel because sometimes they're little, you know, and then Jackson felt her as well. So it's big enough, but still not massive, but big enough that they can actually identify, whoa, baby sister kicked. So that's been really special. Sleep has been fine. No real issues there. I mentioned last time that I have a two-year-old in the bed, but you know, we're working on getting him out. This is like my third rodeo with sleepers. So I sleep train very early on and then often two, two and a half, they kind of, once they can leave their rooms, they find their way back over to me and then I get them back over to their bed. So I know it's our little rhythm, our little dance, and it's not something I'm really worried about. Just like with the susus or with the pacifiers or whatever you call them, I don't really worry about it because I know that by a certain age, I've successfully been able to just take them away. Food cravings or aversions. So my food cravings have remained like just kind of spur the moment, but I would say ice cream is a very important part of my diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a recurring character um, and I love me some ice cream. I don't really have a particular fav flavor I love, but I love some ice cream. Aversions, no aversions like I said, but something I did remember which I forgot to mention in the last video is that I, I have an aversion to certain, certain words. <laughs> Did I ever hear anything like this? I have an aversion to certain words. So there is, there are a couple words that if I say them, I actually feel very nauseous. And sometimes even thinking about it makes me feel that way. But you can ask like a couple of my friends, like I will literally be talking to them on the phone and I will say something or I'll be like, mention this word. I'm really thinking of one word right now and I can't even bother to say it. But um, Ooh. If I actually verbalize it, it makes me feel nauseous. Thinking about it actually makes me feel nauseous. I can eat it though, I think. But there's something about the word. That's a random, 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 random. Me think me are the only woman in the world without one day. Maternity clothes. I told you last week I'm in maternity clothes. I'm gonna take this one off of the list because I'm gonna be in maternity clothes. If you're in Jamaica, let me know where you can buy maternity clothes here because I haven't really seen anywhere that I can. Um, I've always, you know, borrowed from friends or made a trip or ordered in. But I'm curious to know where you buy your clothes here in Jamaica. And I'm curious to know where you are, especially in the Caribbean, if it's easy to access maternity clothes. Um, if not, we need to do something about that, guys. And the last question is any symptoms, emotions, or mood swings? So, like I said, no real new symptoms except for that back pain that I'm having. Uh, emotions were kind of high last week. I won't lie. I lost it a couple times. I went from telling you guys I was so zen, like, ah, to like losing my mind a couple times. So, yeah, I guess I've been a little up and down with the emotional side. So, 
side door. You just have to just kind of take it one day at a time and not put too much pressure on yourself to have this perfect, perfect pregnancy and perfect, perfect person and mother earth all the time, yeah? So now let me show you my bump. Definitely a little bigger than last week, but I don't think it's really much change. Let me lift this up so you can see. Oh, some of you were asking what my tattoo said and it says, I am a child of the universe, no less than the trees and stars. I have a right to be here. Comes all the way down here and comes up here. It's taken from Desiderata, one of my favorites. There it is and there it is. And I was telling you about my belly button, so let me show you. I don't really have an any, I don't really have an outie. This is my scar from my gallbladder surgeries. And I have one in my belly button from there too, so. Yeah. Hi, boobops. There it is. Every bump is different. So for some women, it may be really flat. It may be more pronounced. It may be higher, it may be lower, but this is just mine. Always nice to see somebody else with a bump, but don't go comparing yourself too much. Cause like I said, everybody is so different. All right, thank you so much for joining me for yet another bump date, another video. I'm actually gonna see if I can squeeze one more video in the week until these bump dates are done, just so that it's not just bump date content until baby arrives. So I'm gonna try and see what else I can put in there. Uh, something that came up was birth stories. I think that was a very interesting topic that people wanted to hear more about. Uh, something that's near and dear to me is breastfeeding, which I'd love to talk a little bit more about and talk about my experience with it. It was not um, an easy experience for me. It was very challenging, but it's something I really, really, really uh, believe in. But I also believe that you have to do your best, but know when is the time to move on to what is best for you mentally and also emotionally and just generally. So that was something that I definitely want to talk about. So I'm gonna find a few different things, leave in the comments anything that you'd like me to tackle um, and I'd be happy to do a short video in between this and the Saturday video, just kind of sharing. You guys asked if Tessie would be on the channel and yes, I actually want to have Tessie on about how to raise a girl because she is actually the pro at that right now and so yeah, we're gonna have a couple conversations, not just about that, but other things, um, and not just our own motherhood, but other things as well. So definitely leave in the comments some of your suggestions, any topics you'd like me to tackle, and we will go from there. All right, guys, I will see you again next week, Saturday. Thanks again so much for being here with me, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and most of all, share this with somebody who you think would be interested and who wants to learn and who wants to be a part of a community that is supportive, loving and kind and here for you. So yeah, do that. If this is not your cup of tea, like I said in last week's video, don't worry about it. Just keep moving. You don't have to press anything. You don't have to leave a comment. Just keep on moving. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, enough love and I'll see you next week when we'll be tackling something else. Mwah.